So in the last video, we had gone ahead and smoothened out the animation when we tapped this particular tap gesture handler. But if you notice, we get this flicker when we tap this. We see that blue color for a bit. So let's just try and fix this. So here where we had 0.5, we can set this to 0.1 because we want this blue color to immediately change to white. Let's reload this. Tap the tap gesture handler and we see that that animation is much smoother. Now let's go ahead and set up our other moving parts. So firstly, we should have a back arrow here, which nicely fades in when the screen increases in size. So for that, we'll go ahead and create a new component. Come to your components folder, create a new file, and let's call that header back arrow. Inside this, I'm just gonna pull in a functional component. We'll call that header back arrow. Inside this, we can get rid of this particular view and create a new animated dot view within which we'll have an icon. Let's go ahead and import that. We'll import an ion icons as icon from at expo vector icons. And then let's just pass that in here. The icon we need is MD arrow back for the back arrow and the size is gonna be 24. Let's close that out. Let's go ahead and pull this in first and then we'll style it out. So in our app.js, below our overlay BG, let's import header back arrow from components forward slash header back arrow. Come down to our return. And here below our logo view, let's pass in our header back arrow. It's gonna be an absolutely positioned view, so it can be anywhere inside this container. Let's save that. Let's reload the app. And now let's go ahead and style it. So in the animated view, we'll pass in styles dot back arrow. And let's just spread that out. Here, let's get rid of the container, pass in back arrow. We're gonna set the position to absolute. Give it a height of 60, a width of 60, so that we have a bigger clickable area. We have a top of 60 and a left of 25 to position it here to the top left. We'll also give it a Z index of say 100 because we want it to be on top. Let's save that. And there we see our back arrow. Now, obviously we wanna set the opacity of this back arrow to zero when the app opens up. And then we want it to nicely fade in when we tap this tab gesture handler. So here we're gonna need an opacity property, which for now we'll just set to one. Come back to app.js and to the header back arrow, we can pass in our is open animation based on which we can animate our opacity. So when we tap this tab gesture handler, this is open animation gets triggered from zero to one. Based on that, let's set up the animation. And I just realized I've pulled in a class component. Let's just change this to a functional component. So we'll just say const header back arrow get into the render method and everything should be okay. Here inside this, we're gonna get our is open animation. And here, let's set up our opacity. We'll interpolate over the is open animation. We'll get the input range, which is gonna be from zero to one. And the output range is going to be from zero to one as well. And let's get rid of this one here and save that out. So there we see the back arrow is not visible anymore. If we tap the tab gesture handler, it becomes visible, but we can actually delay its visibility by putting in another value here. So let's just say it, by the time it reaches 70%, we still want it to be at zero. Let's save that. Let's reload the app. Now, if we tap it, we see it come in only when this particular view is about to reach the top. Now we have to set up a tap gesture handler on this as well, which we'll do in a bit. For now, let's go ahead and set up our enter your mobile number which is gonna move up and get moving with Uber will move out as we animate in. So back to app.js, let's go to get moving with Uber. It has styles.heading. We'll also pass it a heading opacity, which we can go ahead and set up now. Come here to the top, below the outer login Y, let's say const header opacity is equal to, we'll interpolate over is open animation, input range, again is gonna be from zero to one, and the output range is going to be from one to zero. This should be heading opacity. Let's save that. And it seems like we typed it incorrectly here. Let's change that to heading opacity. Now if we reload this, 
When we tap our tap gesture handler, obviously it doesn't get hidden because it should be opacity here. Let's reload that again. And as we see, it nicely fades out. At the same time, we want this enter your mobile number to move up to the left here. So instead of trying to move this placeholder, which we really can't do, we'll create another view, which has this text and its opacity is zero. But as this increases, it'll fade in and it'll also move to the top and to the left. So for that, let's go and set up a new component. In our components folder, create a new file. Let's call it animated placeholder.js. Inside this, let's create a functional component, call it animated placeholder. Inside this, let's get rid of this view. And instead, let's pass in an animated dot text. And the text is going to be enter your mobile number. Let's make it exactly like it is there. And let's just pull this in here. We'll pass it in here inside our animated view above our image. So we'll say animated placeholder. It's automatically pulled in. Let's save that. Let's reload the app. And it's obviously not in the right position. Let's go ahead and style this. So we'll say style. Pass in styles.placeholder. Let's replace this container with placeholder. Let's give it a font size of 24. Let's position it absolutely. And we're obviously going to translate it on the Y axis and on the X axis. So here, let's just set up transform. We want to translate Y. Initially, let's leave it at zero and translate X. Initially, we'll keep it to 100 to move it to the right. Let's save that. And we can change this up to 80 to move it to the left. And that's about right. We also need to pass in an opacity here, which we're initially going to set to zero. So now it's hidden. Now again, we want this to animate as the is open animation animates. So let's pass that in here. Let's say is open animation, pass that in. And in our animated placeholder, let's just pass in curly braces, pass in a return statement here. Let's pull in our is open animation. And here we'll say const translate x is equal to interpolate over is open animation. We have the input range zero to one and the output range is going to be our initial value, which is 80. And we want to move it to the left to say 25. Similarly, we'll say const translate y. I'm just going to duplicate this. Here we want to start from zero and move it to a final value of minus 60. But here in the center, till the time half the animation is complete, we want to keep it at zero. Similar to how we wanted to keep the back arrow hidden. Lastly, let's set up our opacity. And instead of translating over the is open animation, we want the opacity to depend on our translate Y because it's easier to interpolate that way. So here we'll just say translate Y. We'll say when it's at minus 60, we want it to be at one. That is when the label is moved up to minus 60, we want the opacity to be one. And when the label is at zero, you want the opacity to be zero. Now here, let's pass these values in. For translate Y, we can just get rid of those values. And similarly for opacity. And obviously we need to copy this out and move these in here. Otherwise it won't be able to read them. Let's save that. Let's reload the app. And now if we tap this, we see our get moving with Uber disappears and enter your mobile number appears. Let's reload that again. And if we want, we can actually just move this towards the left to zero. And that looks much better. Right there. So now we need to do two more things. One is to close out this animation when we press this back arrow. And also when this animation opens up, we want the text input to be focused and we want that forward arrow to appear. So let's go ahead and set up the back arrow first. So in our header back arrow, let's wrap our animated view in a tap gesture handler. We'll set up the gesture handler in our app.js. So come up here. Where we had set up our gesture state, let's just copy that. And let's just say back arrow gesture state. And here let's say back arrow gesture handler. Here we're going to pass in our back arrow gesture state dot current. Now we'll come down here and pass this into our header back arrow. 
So we'll say gesture handler is equal to, and we'll spread out our back arrow gesture handler. Save that, come to our header back arrow. Let's pull that in here. So we'll say gesture handler. And let's pass that into our tap gesture handler. Now in our app.js, let's set up another use code hook. So we'll say use code. Here, we'll set up another condition. And this time we'll check if the back arrow gesture state dot current is equal to state dot end. That is the user has tapped the back arrow. Then first what we'll do is we'll just set the gesture state of this initial tap gesture handler to undetermined so that it doesn't interfere with our animation. So we'll say gesture state dot current and set that to state dot undetermined. And next we'll set is open dot current to zero. So earlier we were setting it to one. Now we'll set it to zero. And we'll also modify this to run only when the back arrow gesture state dot current changes and here only if gesture state dot current changes. Let's reload that. Let's tap this. It nicely opens up. Let's tap the back arrow and it nicely closes down. 